Okay, so this is, what I'm going to try to do is record some lecture notes for you to hear so you can see how I talk about this information with the students in class. I'll also be posting some um, links to videos and some online applications. So the first chapter is chapter one, and it's what is biotechnology. Okay, so throughout history, humans have manipulated things to create organisms or to create different species that might benefit people. Okay, so now we've done it since the beginning of time, um, or human time, I guess. So the idea has been that we breed animals that are going to do what we want them to do. Okay, so we might breed cows that are going to make a lot of milk. If you look at all the different, um, like, varieties of chickens that are out there, the ones that make the most eggs, or maybe the ones that have the, the biggest breasts or the biggest legs so we can get the most meat out of them. Okay, most of that's been done through traditional breeding. Okay, so it hasn't been done using biotechnology. Okay, now plants, we've looked, we've been breeding plants since the beginning of agriculture. Okay, so we select for plants that might be easy for us to harvest, that give the biggest seeds, that give the biggest fruit. Um, this has been done traditionally too. A lot of times though with these traditional breeding efforts, the breeding is checked using biotechnology. So we might look and see, did we get the result that we wanted before we start growing it? Okay, we've manipulated bacteria and fungi to our benefit. We use those to um, make bread, make alcohol like beer, wine. Okay, that's been going on forever. Um, fungi are used to make maybe cheese, yogurt. So we've, we've been using all sorts of different kinds of organisms for a really long time. Okay, now the book's definition of bi biotechnology, what we're doing is we're combining biology and we're combining technology. And the goal is we're going to use technology and we're going to manipulate living things. Okay, so not only are we looking at living things, but we're looking at the things that make them up or that comprise them. So we call those the component molecules. So we'll have the DNA, the RNA, the proteins, okay, and then cells. Okay, we might manipulate tissue. We might manipulate organs. Okay, so, so far we probably have had the most luck manipulating DNA and making proteins, okay? But we're going further and further every day. Okay, now, one example of how we use biotechnology is, is pretty cool. So, um, we use it in what they call biomanufacturing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, try to make a whole bunch of one specific type of molecule. Okay, so an example of this would be insulin. Okay, so insulin's a protein. Okay, it's used to regulate blood sugar. Okay, so it's, it regulates your blood sugar. People that are um, diabetic, if they have like type 1 diabetes, their pancreas doesn't produce enough insulin, so they have to... Um, they have to inject it. Okay, now, in the past, when we first started understanding diabetes and we knew that it was something from the pancreas that they needed, they would take um, horses and pigs, and they would, um, after they, well, if they butchered a pig or they would kill a horse, okay, they would take the pancreas out and they would extract the insulin from it. Okay, now, there are all sorts of limiting things that are a problem with this, okay, so, or that could be a problem. So, if you think about it, let's see, think about it for a second, think about what, what could, what could happen. Okay, so, one, okay, you would have a limit of animals, right? So, you have a limited number of animals. Okay, so you might run out, okay, and you, you have to grow a bunch of pigs. Pigs, pretty expensive. Okay, then you'd have to extract it. Okay, the insulin that the pigs are producing naturally may not look exactly like the insulin coming from a human. 
Okay, so some people would, might have an allergic reaction to it. Okay, the, um, there could be diseases. So there could, the pigs could have a virus or something, or the horses could have a virus. So there could be diseases that you're introducing into someone. Okay, so one of the first biotech projects or recombinant DNA products that was created and used is insulin. Okay, so let's talk about a little bit about how they did it. Okay, so I think I can move this up. So here's here's how they how it works. Okay, so they took the human DNA Okay, and they found the gene that expressed insulin. Okay, so they found the genetic information in the human's DNA that told the cells to make insulin. Okay, they took this piece of DNA and they cut it out. Okay, and they put it in this other kind of DNA, which is called a plasmid, and we're going to talk about that more right now. I just, just am throwing it out there. So they took this insulin DNA and they put it in here. Okay, so this thing would be called a vector. Okay, so the vector is going to carry the DNA that we're interested in. Okay, they put that DNA, this vector, okay, into bacteria. And obviously my pictures aren't to scale, right? This is itty bitty. Bacteria are still small too. Okay, so they put it in here. They could trick the bacteria into producing the insulin that the humans need. Okay, so what they did is they took out a bunch of different variables. Okay, so the, the gene, okay, to make the insulin is coming from a person. So it looks like a person's DNA. Okay, so it took, took care of that allergic reaction. Okay, took care of diseases because we don't have to take the pancreas out of another animal. Okay, there might be something in the bacteria, but there's lots of quality control efforts to make sure that that's not going to happen. Okay, another thing is bacteria grow super fast. Like if we're using E. coli, which is a type of bacteria, it reproduces once every 20 minutes. Okay, so compare that to how long it takes a pig to grow. Okay, so insulin's one of the first things that was made using biomanufacturing and biotechnology to treat a person. And we're going to we'll go over this whole process in way more detail as time goes on. Okay, now here's what this is called when we take the two pieces of DNA and stick them together. So when we manipulate it, what we're trying to make is we're making recombinant DNA. Okay, so they call it RDNA. So we're recombining DNA from two different places and putting it together, and we can get it to work. We can get it to make a protein. Okay, so there's all sorts of products in all sorts of um, places. So there's drugs, okay, so pharmaceutical products. This is one, Synergist, it's actually made in Frederick. It's made in this big building outside of, um, on the way from Frederick to Hagerstown. It's called Metamune, and Metamune's been bought by AstraZeneca. Here, let me... Metamune. Okay, so it's just one example. So like vaccines, um, other drugs like um, like we were just talking about, like insulin, other lots of lots of different things are made this way. Okay, agricultural products. Okay, so um, there are lots of different plants that have been manipulated through genetic engineering and are available to farmers and to to um, to um, consumers. So in the United States right now, it's kind of, well, and across the world, it's a big deal. So other countries are more um, into labeling their genetically modified organisms. In the United States, we haven't really started doing that yet. So it's interesting. Okay, so one big company that is involved in this is Monsanto. Okay, so Monsanto produces um, Roundup Ready plants, Roundup Ready seeds. So Roundup is an herbicide. It kills, kills plants. 
So when farmers plant these big crops, um, the weeds have to be removed. Okay, so normally you would do it by hand. You'd go through here and you'd weed. Okay, so you have these rows and the weeds aren't taking the nutrients away from the plants that you're trying to grow. So no one wants to weed anymore, okay? It's, it's time consuming, um, it's a lot of work. So Monsanto has made seeds that are resistant to the herbicide, okay? So they're Roundup ready. Roundup won't kill the plants that have this gene in them. Okay, so you plant your Roundup ready plants. Okay, you plant them in there and then you, um, you when your plants are growing and you have weeds, you can go through and you can spray, spray Roundup everywhere and your plants that are resistant to Roundup will keep growing. Okay, so there's a lot to think about about that ethically. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Okay, other um, products. So this is a, a bioreactor or a fermenter or some, I think that's what it is, some sort of vessel. I think it's a bioreactor. Okay, so it will be used in biomanufacturing. There's lots of different equipment and technology that has to be out there. Okay, medical application. So here's the mouse with the ear, ear growing on it. Okay, so we can... Um, take lab animals, have them grow tissues. We might be able to grow tissues just in in tissue culture and not not um, and replace things that are damaged. Okay, now we're going to talk about the workers a little bit, what kind of workers are needed, what kind of workplaces there are. So um, there are companies. So companies are for profit. Okay, so they're interested in making money. They are also, hopefully, at the same time, they're trying to improve the human condition. Okay, so improve life. Okay, um, and they're, they're for profit. Okay, now universities and government agencies, um, they kind of focus on applied science. Okay, so for the most part, these are nonprofits. They're not making money. They're making enough money to pay their people, but they're not making a um, not making a profit. Okay, so they're for the most part they're focusing on applied science. They're trying to help help um, improve life. Sometimes they are just doing basic science. Okay, so basic science is finding out information maybe about a pathogen. They don't know what's going to happen with the pathogen. They're not trying to cure it, but they're trying to find out maybe the basic biology about it. Okay, now, who works at these places? So, there's all sorts of staff there. Okay, so there's scientific staff, and there's all different levels. Okay, so there's scientists, research associates, lab technicians. We'll talk about that. Um, and then there's lots of non-scientific jobs. Okay, so there's people that have to make sure that the money is there, and accountants, administrators, people that are making sure the grants are filled out properly, the clerical workers that are making sure everything works the way it's supposed to, and the phones are answered, and... Everyone's where they're supposed to be. People have to sell the um, drugs. People have to market the drugs. People have to do IT. There's just, there's a whole, a whole bunch of different kinds of people that work at these places. Okay, now, if you look at the different kinds of places where you might work, okay, there are labs. So these, this is kind of like the lab I worked in for a long time. So it's set up, kind of looks like maybe your, bio, your biology or your chemistry lab. And, you know, people are going to work at their workstation, there's computers, there's equipment. So it's kind of, you know, kind of like the lab that you're used to seeing. Okay, then there's manufacturing facilities. So manufacturing facilities, they might be a sterile environment in some places. They're going to, it's going to be a lot of machinery, a lot of tubing, piping, um, just lots of stainless steel. Okay, and there's always going to be offices there so people have a place to go that's like you... Where you, where you can go and drink your coffee and work on your computer or whatever. Um, biotechnology companies focus on a lot of different aspects. So someone's got to make the equipment. Okay, so this is BioRad. BioRad is a big company in California. Um, we actually have this in our biotech lab. This is an imager for gels. Um, 
people have to make the reagents or the chemicals that you're going to use. Somebody's got to make all the enzymes. They've got to make the primers and stuff. This is New England Biolabs. Um, I call it NEB. There's a big company in Frederick that does this. It's called Thermo Fisher. It used to be called Life Technologies, but they were bought out by it. Not Thermo Fisher. It's called Thermo Scientific. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm just giving you an example. Somebody's got to make the stuff that we use. Um, someone's got to do the, um, this is a sequencing, a DNA sequencing um, program. So someone's got to understand all the computer, the computer software. The IT part is huge. The, it's called bioinformatics, and we can, we'll talk about that more. Okay, so this is kind of how um, biomanufacturing works, and biotechnology works. So it starts out with someone's got an idea, okay, and if the idea proves to be good, okay, they start manufacturing and making the product, and hopefully they make, they sell it, they make money, okay, and as they make money, it grows, and you can employ more people. And then it expands, and they're going to use some of the profit to go back into research and development. Okay, and then they can manufacture more, and they make more money, and it just keeps growing and growing and growing, and it's a spiral. So the idea is things can get bigger, more people can be employed.